All right, and the man who made that wish come true, Jeremy Bloom, founder of uh, Wish of a Lifetime, joins me tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you, too. This has been a, quite a deal. How did you hear about that particular story and then go about making all of that, orchestrating the whole thing and making it happen? Well, Brookdale Senior Living, which is the largest senior living company in the United States, they were, they were living in one of their homes, and we heard about it through, through Brookdale. Mm -hmm. And so they said, we want to help grant the wish to Russell and, and Odile. And we read the story, and... You know, he's a Normandy survivor. Mm -hmm. They've been married for over 60 years. Her wish was to renew their vows outside of a, uh, a, a church where they met in Paris. And you know, his wish was to return to Normandy, uh, where, where he fought in World War II for mm -hmm. us. And you know, it embodied everything at Wish of a Lifetime, the nonprofit that, that I started four years ago, aims to grant those types of wishes, those types of reconnections in life. And uh, it was a magical experience being able to spend uh, a few days with Russell and Odile over there and watching their you know, lifelong dreams come true. Cool. You know, in uh, Kristen's piece, we saw an 84-year-old woman skydiving. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that one. I looked, I saw her bail out of the plane and I went, oh my gosh. You know, it's amazing. A lot of my friends are like, there's no way I'm going skydiving, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and so I've, I've, I've been skydiving with 90-year-olds uh, that have been, uh, that have had hit replacement Remember surgeries. President Bush yeah, Senior. President Bush did, Senior yeah, did yeah. it. So, you know, it's a, it's a very courageous generation. I would they're, say. They're not scared of much. No, they're not. Uh, tell me a little bit about how the idea of, the, here's the, the woman skydiving, by the way, how did the idea of doing this I in the first place, not, not just how you met these particular people, but how you decided, this is what I want to do. I think this would be a cool thing to do. Well, it started with my relationship with my grandparents at a very young age. My, my grandfather was my first ski instructor when I was three years old. He used to throw little miniature candy bars down the mountain. and That's, <laughs> how, that's how I learned really? how to ski, yeah, in Colorado. Um, and my grandmother lived with us growing up. And for the first 19 years, I had the love of a grandmother in, in our home. Mm -hmm. And I just think, you know, that generation, 80, 90, and 100 year old people, sometimes are forgotten about in, in our culture. And it's our goal to bring them back to the forefront and encourage a behavior switch around. I think that's an interesting point that you bring up because here you are, you're a young guy and you've done a lot in your lifetime already. And I could just start listing off the stuff from Olympic skier, football player, model, entrepreneur. You've, you've started this foundation. Uh, they're, by the way, Colorado buff. I might, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but, he, you know, it's, it's easy for us. We hear of the, the Zuckerbergs of the world and, and some of these young people and they're in their 20s doing amazing things. But I think you're right. It's really easy to forget some of our, our senior citizens and they have so much to give and offer and you know I think it's great that you're remembering them. Yeah you know so, so, so much wisdom to share and so many stories that they've been around the block and you know if you if you look at some other cultures the way that they treat the oldest people in their generation is vastly different than mm -hmm. the, how we do here in the US and so I think there's there's a lot more that we can do um, in the United States to, to build a culture around saying thank you to what I think is the greatest generation for you know, fighting on the beaches of Normandy, on the boats of Pearl Harbor, for pulling us through the Great Depression, for giving us life. What are know. they telling you? Are, are they, in terms of, I, I think we actually have some information about how it's impacting their lives, not only mentally, but physically too. This whole thing is helping them. Yeah, well, we launched a, a wish impact study because you know when, when I first started the organization, we had no idea if we were gonna have an impact at all. And so we wanted to measure the types of impacts that we were having. And we're seeing elevated response and health and engagement and sense of purpose. And it's, it's really exciting data to see mm -hmm. because it means that we're, we're making a difference not only in their lives, but in their families' lives. Right. I think we've got some of that information and they're gonna pop it on the screen for everybody to see here. Some of the, the again, the impact, as you said, overall uh, happiness improvement, 95%, extremely improved, 52%, very improved, 28%, somewhat improved. And, and you see that, but to some degree, one, uh, one or another, 95% of the people say that their happiness improved, their, their physical abilities are improving, which just goes to show kind of, I guess if you get out there and do things and you feel appreciated, it does make an impact. Yeah, and what's interesting about this study is in some cases, this is one year post-wish. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just the next day and say, hey, are you happier? Or do you feel more, more of a purpose? Because a lot of the people that we, we find um, are the people that their family members don't visit anymore and their siblings have passed on and they don't feel a sense of purpose left in their life. And so we're kind of the strange organization that says, you know, a thing you've always wanted to do for X amount of years, we want to help that uh, you know, dream come true. That's but a, you know, a lot more information on our website, which is seniorwish.org. Lots of ways to get involved with, with what we're doing and certainly we're always looking for more wishes to grant. Real quickly, you're in the Bay Area. What are you doing here in San Francisco? 
I have an internet company, <laughs> and so uh, why not be in the Bay Country, <laughs> in the Bay Area? So. All right, as I mentioned, they're a fellow buff. Uh, so I don't, I've never done this before, give a, a, a gift to anybody, but I got this buff towel for you just because you're a fellow buff. There you go, go Thank buffs, you. go see you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jeremy, pleasure to meet you. Keep up the good work. There's some people in Palo Alto that uh, might not be happy <laughs> oh, about I this. Know. In the I'm in trouble <laughs> with all of the Bay Area now with Stanford and Cal and everything, yeah. but it's all in good fun.